All right, guys. So one of our biggest coaching points um, on our sprints these last couple of weeks has been on the importance of our foot strike. Now we're going to kind of go at it from, from two different um, angles. So um, whether it's acceleration or max velocity, um, it doesn't really matter. The, the whole principle is the same, is that you want to make sure that um, your foot is striking underneath your hip or at least working back um, underneath your hip. So specifically with, with max velocity, when we're vertical here, Okay, we want it to be stepping as close to underneath the hip as possible. And obviously it's not going to be directly under, but as close to as possible. And then for acceleration, um, we want to make sure that we're really working it back. Again, if we were to switch it vertical, it ends up being almost underneath the hip. That's a concept. So um, the whole importance of it is if the foot lands out in front of the body, all right, one, we're creating a braking mechanism, right? If we're talking about um, Newton's third law for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. So if my foot lands here, okay, there's gonna be force working back into my body. So I'm creating a braking force. Um, from there, I have to wait until my hip clears, you know, about your shoelaces or just call it your foot. I have to wait for my hip to clear my foot before I can even begin to think about pushing and then re-accelerating. Okay, so I'm creating a break and then I have that lag time where I'm not going to be able to produce any force um, or any accelerated force to continue where I'm going. Um, and the other side of that then is if I'm landing here, I'm opening up my hamstring to potential injury, right? It's in an elongated exposed um, space. And if my quad and my hamstring were to contract at the same time, right, the quad is more muscle mass, it's, it's going to win. That's where those hamstring pulls happen. Um, same thing with acceleration, right? If my foot lands out front where it's supposed to, right? If I'm trying to work horizontal, my foot lands here, right? I'm creating a break. And then I'm also changing all of the direction of my force to become more vertical. Then, um, I become super inefficient, um, in my acceleration. So, um, just in terms of pure efficiency, that's what we're looking at. And then the second part of it is how the foot strikes the ground. So when we're running, we want to make sure you guys hear me say this all the time. Okay, knee up, toe up, we want to expose the ball of the foot. If my foot strikes the ground with toe down, okay, your foot's going to collapse and then I'm, I'm leaking all of this force into the ground and I'm going to collapse into it, okay, and I'm going to think of like a sponge, right? You're not going to be able to bounce that much out of the sponge, whereas if I'm knee up, toe up here exposing the ball of the fit, uh, foot, you kind of get that pogo action, right? So always think, um, think toe up. Because when we do all of our pogos, we don't do them on the tippy toes here. We're always pulling the toes up and getting that kind of rubber band action there, that, that big spring. Um, so when you're doing your sprinting, okay, really think of where and how your foot is striking the ground.